Welcome back, it is Thursday, that means acting analysis for animators, and today I'm going to take another look at ER, and it's going to be, as always, The Carter Show. That's right, in all of my ER clips, Carter is everywhere because he covers so much in terms of acting and lip sync and pantomime and prop interaction, so much good stuff. But instead of talking, let's show it. And in this case, you have these two doctors doing a very complicated procedure, and this is all about Carter <laughs> checking in and reacting to what they're saying. And there's so many things that you can apply taking this shot. So he makes a little joke, right? And you can see how Carter reacts to that joke with a little bounciness, but he keeps looking because he really wants Benton's approval. He wants to look at, is this doctor also laughing? Is this appropriate to laugh? And what I'm taking out of this is that, A, I mean, you can have something where they're doing something very serious and you can have a character laughing maybe in an inappropriate way. Maybe these characters are stopping what they're doing, looking back. And again, it's all about this character. And that way you also have interesting framing where this character is in the middle, taking up all the focus there. Or you can take something where they're actually talking about something really, really boring. Or this could be some boring secondary action. Or this could be parents, I don't know, with a baby and diapers. And this character is trying to do something and maybe, you know, you can be gross and there's pee coming up. Oh, it's probably yellow as well. And this is why this character is laughing. Anyway, you can continue on, but there are many, many ways where you can take interesting dialogue that they're talking and have this character react to this, or you can use really boring dialogue because you kind of ran out of dialogue. Maybe you have a clip, but it's not that interesting. So maybe you can use that clip, but it's all about a background character listening and reacting to what those two or one character is are saying. But you know what I mean, right? And this continues on with this sequence, right? So he looks over and he looks over and you can have this thing of right there as he goes down. He is on his toes to check. So there's a lot of mimicking. And this continues on where he actually tells <laughs> Benton that he's lucky to have Carter. And look, you can look at Carter's reaction because he says, yeah, I guess sometimes I'm lucky. I mean, you know, it's, it's not that bad. And you can see his, oh, oh, it talks about me. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. I'm happy, happy. <laughs> what I love it too is that they have a mask. I mean, he has to do everything through eyes and body language. And this could be something, again, that you could take. This could be, uh, I don't know, maybe they're painters and they got to have masks of paint. And again, because of that, it's all about the eyes and body pantomime. But I love his little reaction there. And he continues on where actually he asks Benton if he wants to finish this procedure. But what I love about this is watch his face. So watch him nodding. Do you want to continue? And it even starts in this shot in the background. He is already saying yes because he wants him to be successful to do this as well. And you can see he he is already nodding and going, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, do it, do it. And yes, he does it and they're all excited and he tells them, come on, Carter, get in and help me out. But I love this. I love that you can take a conversation again between two characters that seem to be the main characters, but it's all about this. And it could be, again, him reacting or anticipating. And he's already kind of anticipating what he is going to do. Next up is a fantastic sequence. It's basically just one long shot. It is in the cut with a close up and a close up. But other than that, I mean, this could have been all filmed in one take. And there's so much to unpack here. So basically, there are little things everywhere. So you have this main character in a specific pose. Obviously, you want to start with a strong pose that kind of gives us the whole idea of the shot. It's almost like your, what I talked before in a previous clip, your default pose. Your default pose shouldn't be your T-pose character, arms down, and that's it. No, your character is in a specific state of mind, an emotional state of mind, or whatever it is, and that is your beginning pose. And this could be whatever it is, right? But think about, if I pause on this frame in my shot, does this body language already tell us what the character is feeling? Of course, there is hopefully going to be a change within your shot where that body language and the pose changes. But at the very beginning, if you start the shot, is the pose of one character, if you have multiple characters, are the pose of all those characters telling us what is going on in the scene in terms of emotional state or whatever it is, right? So again, I love that it starts like this and then you have this intro, bam, with Carter just scaring Benton. But he is doing something that's potentially illegal. He's checking documents he's not supposed to. So you can see his scramble and he's immediately covering this and then kind of, yeah, okay, okay, I'm getting busy. And he says, I'm sorry that I scared you. Like, you know, I wasn't scared. But he is so focused on this that whenever Carter talks, and then he's not really looking. So he goes off, hey, I did this, 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 and this for you. Am I, you know, okay to go home? And he does this awesome Benton with like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And it's this kind of half, almost off screen gesture stuff that I love where the focus is here, but it's not, you know, it's still silhouetted. It's still clear, 
but it's just something that an actor did that you happen just to kind of catch in there in your framing. But again, look at this. There's no eye contact, but he, he wants to focus on this. He doesn't care what he is doing. Now, he apologized for something he did before, and this is the only time he actually looks. Because, I mean, they do like each other, and, you know, he wants to acknowledge this. Yeah, no, it's fine. But you can see the constant moving in the chair, that, and the shoulders. This is constant, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. I want to continue on. But he does ask him at the end, hey, did you do this? And he says, yes, he did. But he lied, and he knows that he lies. And then watch Benton here. He goes, yep. Yeah, waiting, waiting. Yeah, I knew this. And I love this. I love that it says this up and down. Yeah, I'm waiting. One, two, three. And that reaction, yeah, I knew you didn't do this. And he tells him, yeah, I know. I called him. And he has that quick little look. Does he actually look at him? I think he does right here. And then it's this awesome wave off. I love that gesture. Looks down. Yeah, I'm done with you. But what's also cool with this is that you have him. He tells him, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I did this. And again, you can push this where you make it clear that he is potentially lying, right? Then you have this big exit. And now it's anticipation knowing it's going to come back. And I love this that he could go back with maybe, he can go out, sorry, with um, uh, maybe he's angry. Like, of course I did this. And then the contrast comes in right away with a very, no, I'm sorry, I did not do this. So him exiting and coming back in is a big opportunity for contrast where he knows okay uh, yes i'm sorry i didn't do this and then you can again play off between these two because he knows that he didn't do this anyway there's a lot of stuff now even then i love the ending because you might think boom that's the end but even though it's pretend that's the end of the lip sync you can still have this so benton doesn't want to be disturbed does his extra thing closes this and it gets back in. This is also interesting from a bottom mechanics point of view. You have a chair with wheels, the way he gets in there, right? He doesn't have to get up. He kind of wheels himself over. So if you have extra sound in your, in your lip sync, that's just, you know, adding the ambient stuff of, I don't know, maybe there's a window, or there's stuff happening outside. You can continue this shot and add one more thing that tells us something about the character, but also breaks it up from just being like this, right? This is basically how he's always in the shot. And by having him do this, you do break the spatial relationship. There's more usage of space. You change the silhouette. It gives a bit more full body almost. You don't see the legs. But again, different types of mechanics. Rolling, you could get up and kind of lean over. So again, this could be something for contrast. You're stuck with this character sitting for lip sync. But at the end, you're adding this with some interesting new movements that still tells us something about the character. And last one is again, Carter and Benton. <laughs> As they go out and Carter is presenting, there's something that is pretty common. This is something that you can check on your own if you are in a group of people. You can observe other people, but sometimes you will do this as well. When I learn about this, sometimes I catch myself doing this. And what is this? It's that if a person you're talking to is in a specific pose, in this case, they're crossing arms, and you agree with that person, there's a big chance that you will actually mimic that pose. So you probably, if someone is standing or sitting and then start to cross their legs and you're watching this person, you might even cross their legs and mimic that same pose. This is something that is common that you can observe. Going back to the shot, you can see Benton does this all the time. He has his arms crossed and Carter really wants to be like him. He wants his approval. And I like even the setup of this. It's almost like a mirror. They're both profile and you can see they're doing the same thing. I'm assuming that that was intentional. I could be completely wrong as always with anything that I say here. I'm reading into this. But anyway, I like this setup and I like that it shows this, that it, the camera changes around to be framed like this for this moment where they want to be, or he wants to be, again, just like Benson. And this continues on throughout the whole shot where they continue crossed and crossed but also like, again, the setup of the camera turning, giving us now a front view and a profile view and giving us the option for this character to exit this way and the character to exit this way. Just a bit more dynamic in terms of camera language there, but it's not technically something you need to do, but I do like this. I do like that idea of this character mimicking this character and it presented like that to really be a visual mirror. Boom, you survived another ER acting analysis. And again, I have so much more, but as always, I'm gonna do this maybe once a month or every two months. Uh, I don't wanna flood this whole channel with just ER stuff, but I do have a specific playlist just for ER.
But anyway, as always, this is a longer clip. And if you watch this whole thing till the very end, I do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and hit the bell button because I do upload almost every day except weekends. So if you don't want to miss any of this stuff, subscribe and hit that bell button. Also, if you feel like this is helpful and you want me to help you with your shots in terms of what I talk about in terms of body mechanics or this in terms of acting analysis stuff, you can sign up for my workshops. My workshops are open. All the info is in the FAQ and the email as well. So if you want to join, just let me know and you can sign up. But that's it. That's it for another ER and I will see you in my next clip probably tomorrow.